Abigail Joy with Crypto Ventures. I have Jake Hoffman here and we are going to be talking about Bitcoin, about everything that's going on. He's running in Tampa, so we're going to get the whole lowdown. So give me a little bit of insight about you running in Tampa for the first time. Right? Yeah, yeah, I'm running for the Florida State House in Tampa. Um, I am a digital entrepreneur. I have a remote company. We sell fitness programs actually for professional athletes. So I come from a digital background and I'm very into all things crypto and NFT and all that good stuff. Nice. Uh, but it was it was time after all the shutdowns happened to get involved in politics as well. So that's what kind of sparked me to run when they shut down every gym in the country and hurt a lot of our clients. So that's, that's really the motivation for getting into it and then making sure that kind of stuff never happens again. And a lot of things that you talk about as well, where there's a lot of digital solutions to some of the government overreach we're seeing. And so yeah. there's a lot, a lot to unpack there. So wherever you want to take it. Right. Well, I'm sh the government overreach, I'm sure that they want to keep overreaching and they don't want Bitcoin to thrive. Some people think that, you know, the globalists are in on it and it's really not what people say it is. So what do you think about that? Do you think it, it is actually like a grass, grassroots and it's, or do you think it's a globalist thing? So I think it started grassroots yeah. and I, I, as somebody who will tell you, I own lots of cryptocurrencies, lots of different projects. I totally believe in, I totally believe in the blockchain and everything. I have some skepticism actually over yeah. Bitcoin just a little bit because yeah. of things like Tether that are involved in it. And when you start to see the fact that Bitcoin right now is Tether to yeah. Tether or yeah. USD coin or something like that, the idea that it's going to become you know digital gold and be the gold yeah. standard and all that kind of thing, right. it's a, I'm a little bit skeptical about the fact that it's still being based on the US dollar as the, as the default currency. Right. So I'm a yeah. little bit iffy on that being the, the currency that takes over the whole globe and becomes default currency. But right. in the meantime, it does you know suffice for a lot of third world countries that yeah. have totally destabilized you know currency yeah. or if you know you want to send money back to your family, different places. I mean so obviously there's tons and tons of use cases. I'm a, not quite, uh, you know, like a Bitcoin evangelist where yeah, I'm like, it is yeah, the number yeah, one thing, yeah. it is the only thing. But I think that, but blockchain technology in general, right, I think, right. is absolutely a solution for so many of our problems. And there's so many projects out there that I think are fantastic. There was some guys talking about the, um, voting on the blockchain. I, I actually pushed for this. I don't know if you've ever seen me talk about this. No. Uh, so last year, or almost two years ago now, after the election, we out of the Tampa Bay Young Republicans, actually, I saw what happened with the election. I knew exactly how it happened, right? It, it, they, they funded all the supervisor of elections. They went and just picked up ballots that they mailed out to everybody. They only picked them up in Democratic zip codes. And then you have all this you know, paper. They're putting in the drop boxes, all of these things. So we actually came out, and I called up all the Republicans in the state of Florida, right? Your, your, your leaders in the party, your speakers, every, they, I, I won't name names, but I will say I talked to a lot of Republicans in the area, and I said, what are we going to do about the election? Elections. And every single one of them told me the same thing. They said, it's not popular. It's not something that polls well. Uh, that's Georgia's problem. That was Arizona's problem. Florida was fine. And I was like, that's not an acceptable answer. No, I was like, no. there's so many they're problems. They're being lazy. They're being lazy. They're, 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 they're being controlled. Yeah. More than anything, yeah. it was just that even, even if you believe that everything was totally fine in the last election, all of the things that we proposed actually in a petition yeah. are things that would make an election safer, right? So no, no mail-in ballots. Uh, no drop boxes, and part of that, I wanted to have no foreign-based software in our voting machines, because again, even if you don't believe that it affected this election, we have had the largest cyber attack on this country just last year with the uh, uh, solar winds attack, and they got into, you know, the DOD and the nuclear agencies, and like, everybody, and so to think that our, you know, the software isn't able to be attacked through back doors in oh, foreign-based yeah. software yeah. is a huge problem. So they actually didn't do that in the state of Florida. Now, Ron DeSantis did take a lot of what we wrote. Like, five days later, I'm not going to say anything bad about him. Love the guy. Yeah. But he plagiarized a little bit of some of, my, some of our stuff. And, okay. and so he got, we, we got like five of the ten points on election integrity. But one of the main things I called for was, again, I wanted to make sure we had no foreign-based software in any of our voting machines. But then I also wanted to get a blockchain exploratory committee to start putting voting on the blockchain because I've talked to a lot of these companies. There's a few good ones out there, three or four. And they will tell you they're not quite there yet. The software is still not 100%. But they're 
close. Yeah. They're close. Okay. And the way I explain it is that when you mail out tons of ballots and people talk about fraud and you say, how do you commit fraud? I always say, I'm like, your dumbest friend that you know can go and commit fraud with ballots and mail in ballots. Yeah. Like, yeah. But if you're going to hack the blockchain, then you're going to try and do something. The record is there. The record's there. Yeah. There's something there. And it has to be your smartest friend, at least. Like, it's right. not, it can't be these local, you know, Democratic executive committees that just order a bunch of people and pay a bunch of money to go pick up ballots. And right. you have to, it's a very coordinated, complicated thing to do. Yes. And they have good tests in, like, the Philippines. They've run some of the GOP elections in, I think, Arizona and Nevada. So some of these companies that are out there, I can't remember their names exactly right now, but yeah. if you Google some of the, the voting watching companies that are out yeah, there. Yeah, the guys, the guys with Zap were yeah. talking about doing that. So there's people in the space that want to innovate in that sense. Do you think that's something that we'll see within, like, the next year, or do you think it's a ways out? I would love to see it the next year. What I can tell you is I think it's, like, the next 30 years. And, 30 years. and it's not... It's not that the software's not there. It's not that. It's the political will to do it. Yeah. And I don't think Republicans are 100% innocent when it comes to voter integrity and things like that, depending on the state that you're in, depending on if, you know, do they control all of the supervisor elections in their state. I don't think it's a one-way type right. of thing where it's just Democrats doing it. The like Republicans do this stuff, too. So maybe they don't want it. And so I think that there's an element of wanting to control it. And yeah. so if you give it to something that's totally new and foreign, they don't want to do it either. And so there's not a political will to do it unless you get people like me into office where yeah. you're like, I hate the government and right. I don't believe that they have the best interest in our, you know, for us and we right. can do something about it. And one of the things um, that, that I was going to say about uh, implementation is that I, I joke, but I'm not joking when I say like American Idol ruined this whole concept for us because like when we were kids, yeah. we had American Idol and we text. Oh, like, I love that uh, Yeah, we, we text it. and we say, hey, this person won and then everybody goes, those results are rigged. Those results are rigged. We text yeah. all of our results in and then like, and you know what? They probably are because it's, right. it's reality TV and you're yeah, texting your scripted. information. Yeah, and there, But there is a centralized thing, but because of that, Americans have this thing about them that says like, I don't trust voting by my phone. I don't trust voting by a computer. Yeah, they, so they don't fast. like like uh, online. They just, they're sketched out They by just it. don't believe it. And so right. maybe our generation, like I said, 30 years from now, will be like, blockchain is used for everything. Why yeah. wouldn't we use it for yeah. voting? Right. But right now, it's very hard to convince a 70-year-old who doesn't understand, doesn't trust any of it, that like, we yeah. need to switch our elections to it. Right, it's a long ways out. Yeah. Well, what, what do you think? Do you think it's possible to fix a corrupt system within a corrupt system? I, I do. you, you want to get your name out there? Or is it just... Like, what do you, you think it is possible? Like, you, yeah. you don't think it's completely controlled? Yeah, the way, the way that I look at it is that uh, you, you're never going to be able to, like, dismantle wow. something. And, and it's, yeah. it's, it's just not it's just not possible, you know. And it's the same thing's happened with, with the socialists on their side, right? They're like, we just need to get rid of all the health care and, like, socialize all the medicines. Like, well, you're not starting from zero. You're starting from dealing yeah. with all of these other stakeholders. And so I'm very libertarian. My problem with libertarians is we tend to, like, think in these, like, philosophical, like, mind arguments up here, like, what it would be like if we were, like, starting a society from zero. Yeah. You're not. You're just not. Yeah, it, it's, it's just, like... It's that perfectionism, that OCD, like, yeah. but you can't. You have to just go with what you have and yeah. take it from there. So I really like that answer. That opened my mind a little bit because I, I always tend to think you can't fix the system while being in the system. Yeah. But when there's people like you that are going out there and actually running on these important topics, which people are wondering about, and a lot of Republicans aren't really even talking about it. No, I, I talk about There's one other guy named Jason Holloway. He's running in uh, St. Petersburg for State House as well. He's, he's young. He's on the uh, Florida Blockchain Task Force. We had a long conversation about this, that if we're both elected into the State House, we're probably the only person that can even talk about blockchain, you know, with, with any sort of idea of what yeah. we're talking about. Yeah. And and when you get more young people, and they don't all have to be young, there's, there's some smarter people that are yeah. older than us out there that do understand it, but yeah. when you get people of that mindset into the places of power and places where they can actually change the laws, we can fix a lot of the system. It's not going to be perfect. It's never going to be 100% perfect, but we can right. make a lot of progress in there. I just don't believe, you know, I have a lot of friends that are very um, just disillusioned with the whole process, and yeah. so, like, they don't want to do anything with politics. They don't, like, why am I bothering? I'd rather just get totally out of the system. You know, they're anarcho-capitalists, right, where they're just like, yeah. I'm done with all of it. And I, I just don't believe that you can fix it by, like, throwing stones at the house. Like, I believe you have to, like, be inside of it and kind of change it from within. Yeah, I guess, because look yeah. at what Trump did, you know? I mean, he was able to yeah. get in there and change things, and now look at where we're at. We can yeah. see that, you know, that black and white of when Trump was in, we were in power, and now we have Biden, and everything just fell apart. So whoever's acting like they don't see it, it's just like, come on.
like at this point, just like admit it. You were wrong. You know. <laughs> that's that's the hardest thing is that yeah, people don't the, like to admit they're wrong. Yeah. And I was talking about this. I wrote an article about it for the, the Sarasota Herald about how people will not ever admit that they were wrong about COVID. They will not admit that they were wrong yeah. about the vaccine because they've right. already made a permanent decision, yeah. right? And so it's like getting a tattoo. Yeah. And you're like, you can look back and everyone's like, that was a dumb tattoo. But it's like, you're going to rationalize it. Well, I, I, it, it, no, it's okay. I, you know, I, it's all right. Like, you know, yeah. it's not really that bad. And, and that's what people are doing with the vaccines. And they never want to admit that they were wrong and they made right. a decision in the, in the, in the moment yeah. that really wasn't the best for their yeah. health long term. Yeah, exactly. So tell me a little bit about like your experience so far. Like as a politician, has it been rough? Has it been like interesting? Do you have people on your side? Yeah, so I, I come from a kind of a unique space. Like I am a little bit of an outsider, but I'm not such an outsider that, the that they yeah. have no idea who I am and they just want to like stop me out right. before I even start. Yeah. Which I, you do see a lot of, right? Yeah, if you're exactly. if you are somebody totally on the outside, you come in and do it. Um, they they try and you know get the party resources or you know, all the lobbying money that comes into some of these things everything against you so you don't win and um, so I, it's, it's good to play a little bit of politics with it and make some friends and, yeah. and, and, and show them that you're able to work with them because it's not that you want to come in and just like now you probably have talked to Anthony Sabatini right and he's of the opinion yeah, that yeah, I love him. you just need to take a flamethrower to the whole yeah, capital yeah, yeah. and I try to tell him I go well you can say that because you've already been doing it for six years yeah. and, and you're running for congress now and you can kind of run he's like that to it. And, but there, there's an element of politics to it and, and you're not you know to be honest like this conversation we're having yeah. It's not going to be on a platform, right? I'm not going to be running ads about it unless I'm really specifically yeah. targeting a blockchain community. It's on the ground. Yeah. Nobody has any clue what we're talking about. Yeah. So, like, when you start the politics, you start the marketing of it, like, you're talking about the things people care about. Whoever's on Fox News that night is what people care about. Yeah. Right? So, it's the Short RT. attention span. Short attention span. Yeah. yeah. So, that's what we're talking about. And I, I try and say, like, it's about getting people that just have, you know, that are smart, open-minded, yeah. uh, that have a certain ideology in the back of their head, so that when they approach all of these new problems that are going to arise every year, they're going to be different issues. Yeah. That, like, when you're approached by that, you're like, oh, no, this is how I handle it. And, and, yeah. I, and I joked with Sabatini about this, like, when the, first, we, when the shutdowns were first happening in, in Florida, I called him because he was the only legislator that I was like, you are going to actually do something about this. And he was like, let's do a, we did a video just like this. And we did a whole show. And we were like, the, the red flags in our head just start going off. When you start saying we're going to do government shutdown, I don't care what your reasoning is, right? And it's like, the answer is no. Because no, we have, yeah. like, the, that's not the government's place. But for we're a lot of... But yeah, so for a lot of Republicans, that's not the case, right? They yeah. just, they, they start to rationalize, they start looking at polling numbers, they say, like, what's this going to do for my re-election? statistics. All of those things, yeah. which are usually made up. Right. And, um, but for some people, it's just this, like, immediate red flag, like, the government can't do that. Um, I'm very, like, anti-authoritarian my entire life, like, all my entire life. And so, like, I'm yeah. Yeah. just, like, whenever someone tells me I can't do something, I'm immediately, me like, too. why? What, what, what do you, like, why? Right, yeah, like, what is your thinking behind this? Yeah. And what we do is we get to the root of the problem, and we actually do deep research, which a lot of people yeah. don't do. And then that's why we're able to hold our ground and explain ourselves on these different experiences. Yeah. That's the thing, like you were saying about, like, blockchain and crypto, when you try to have conversations with people, you can tell that they're just not very into it. Like, they don't understand, like, they're calling Bitcoin stock. Yeah. And, you know, beginner type stuff. Yeah. yeah, when I have my Uber driver be like, I just invested in cryptocurrency, and they're showing me they put, like, 30 bucks on, like, their phone and Coinbase. Like, yeah. And it's going up, and I'm up 10 bucks today, and I'm like, I, I mean, I'm glad you're getting into it. I'm glad you're yeah, starting the process and everything. Yeah, that's how people do, but... But it is a, it's a situation where, like, a lot of people just don't get it. Even if, even if yeah. they're invested in it, a lot of them don't have any idea what the process is or what it is. They don't understand how to, like, own their Bitcoin, which you have to have a cold storage, a ledger, a treasure. about them is they have that mindset, right? Like, how else do you, 
I advocate for Bitcoin so hard, like Jack Dorsey does, and then run a company so backwards from what your original intent was. And that's so it's like it's frustrating to see it because all of the social media companies now have that problem with their CEOs. But originally their intent was supposed to be like me, like they're just digital marketers that were like out to like change right. whatever exactly. it was that they were trying to do. Exactly. And you gotta wonder like who's trying to, you know, infiltrate, control them yeah. and that's the thing, so you don't really know if it's them, but at the same time, they're not standing up for their invention, their platform. And we don't really have room for that in this new world where we're making our own tribe, we're making our own group, we're standing for what's right, we're getting people sovereign. You know, we don't need all of this government control. You're the first person that I talk to that's a politician. That, well, you're, you're not to I, I'm me. almost there. I'm only I'm like there. In four months. <laughs> website is jakeforstatehouse.com. Okay. Um, you know, I'm at jakehoffman561 on Instagram, and then all the links are in there. So okay. between those two places, I mean, obviously, I'll take any support if anybody wants to. I'll take it in Bitcoin. I'll take it in Ethereum. Yes, yeah, I love that.